Hey everybody, Ed Frolich here with Ocean Deep Fishing and today is going to be a DIY how to change your oil in your Yamaha 200 outboard engine. We went fishing yesterday and after yesterday's fishing did reach our 20 hours on our Yamaha motor which uh, actually were like 23 point something hours so it's in need of a uh, oil change according to the manual. So today that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to change your oil in the Yamaha. So we're going to need Yama Lube. Um, we have one gallon and then a quart, just in case we need a little extra to top it off. Always like to have a little bit extra. You're going to need a wrench of some sort. We've got a number 30 star socket that we're going to use with the wrench. We have some anesthesia lubricant that we're going to put on the bolts after we take them out. We have a small little wire brush to clean the bolts when we take them out. And then we have a must every time you change you pull out the oil plug to change the oil you have to put in a new washer they suggest that every time and it's most important that you do it and then of course we have our oil jug to catch our oil all right so let's get started and i'll show you step by step on uh, how we do this okay so on e either side of the motor you have a lever that you're going to pull out which is holding your top cowling on You've got one on this side, one on the opposite side in the same place, and then you have one in the front. Okay, once you get all those removed, you're gonna take the cowling off. Set that aside. Screw right there that needs to come out. We have one on the other side, but that's gonna hold the left side of the motor. We only need to remove the right side, so we're only going to undo that screw there. And then in the back, you'll see we have one screw there, one screw there, one that's kind of hidden underneath here and then there's one in the back here and then we have these two that are right here and this whole side will come off we're going to do that now and then what you're going to need is a t30 star socket in order to remove these screws take number three off And we have this one that's kind of hidden. And then we have this one here. Okay, that's all your screws there. Then we have to take this one out right here. That'll be the last screw and then you can take the panel off. Okay, and it just kind of pulls down. All right, so now just set this aside. Okay guys, this is your drain, oil drain. We're gonna take that off there. A little flapper here so you can put your um, catch bucket underneath there or your funnel, bring it down. Um, we're using a um, 14 millimeter socket that fits on there. And, oh shit, just took off some skin. Woo, that hurt. Just opened myself up on this nut when it released. Okay, just put that there. Okay, that was a bit messy. That's why I put the cardboard on the bottom. And you can look at your oil too. It looks uh, dark, which is okay. 
you don't want to make sure that it's um, not milky white if it was a milky white consistency you would definitely have issues where water <clears throat> was getting through the seals all right we're going to let that drain real good okay guys you can see here that this is the ring that came on it and they suggest that you put a new one on every time and we're going to replace that one when we put the oil back on so just let the oil drain for a while okay guys here is the new ring and this is a genuine yamaha part and i'll list all this stuff in the description below the part numbers that i'm using all right so we're going to get the new one we're going to put it on the ring and we're going to put this back on and we're going to start it by hand always want to start these things by hand so that you don't cross thread the threads and then you can um, tighten it down with the wrench alrighty guys give it a good snug but don't over tighten it while you got your side panel off just double check and make sure like for corrosion and stuff salt water can get in this area just to check it out and make sure you're good to go this is on the top of your motor this is your oil fill and you're just going to take this off make sure that black gasket is not broken and it's still on there intact all right guys i'm going to use a funnel <clears throat> it's best that you use a funnel don't try to pour it into the hole and i recommend that you use alma lube which is this right here that we're using rather than an off the wall brand and this is okay <clears throat> to do this service yourself but but just make sure you're using the proper stuff and keep records all right so we're going to put this gallon in I'm trying to keep this close to the funnel so it doesn't blow all over the place all right usually at this oil change it usually takes a little bit more than a gallon so we're going to let that rest a minute and then we're going to check our dipstick <clears throat> all right guys here's your dipstick and everything is color coded too so the oil up there was yellow the oil check down here is yellow and you want to let it sit a little while to um, get down to the crankcase right now it's not even showing on the dipstick there's two holes in here it's showing just past the first hole so we got to add a little bit more you want to make sure all the oil drains down into the oil pan to get a proper reading on there so I'm gonna let that sit just another minute or two but I want to take you over here just so you know this is where the oil filter is at this time on the 20 hour service we don't have to change this oil filter um, on the 100 hour service it says to change that so we're good on that but anyway that's where it's at let's check this uh, dipstick one more time so now it's been sitting here a little bit and i don't know if you can see this i'm going to try to so there's if you can see that there's two holes the one at the bottom of the dipstick hole that's considered your low level this one here is considered your high level now after you change your oil if your oil is anywhere in between these two dots, it's an acceptance level that your motor has enough oil in it to run. But realistically, I like to have it at least half, maybe three quarters of the way. Now, if it goes over the full, you could actually hurt your motor by having too much oil in it, and you'd want to drain some of it out till it got below that full mark. So we wiped it off. We've checked it. It went up a little bit because it was right at the low level. We've checked it and it's up just a little bit more. So we're going to put it right back in. Okay, guys. So I took the quart oil and it was right here. And I put a, a quarter of the one quart oil in there. And that should be sufficient. We're going to let it drain about five minutes to make sure get, we get as accurate a uh, reading as we can on a dipstick. And I think that'll do it. Okay, guys. One more thing while we're waiting for this oil to drain before we check the dipstick for the last time. It's always a good idea while you have the cowling off to check your engine parts for salt water corrosion of any salt water that or actually just the mist of the salt water that get in there can corrode parts so anyway let's take a look at that real quick. you just want to do a visual inspection everything looks good there you want to make sure that you look at all these parts in here all the screws and i don't see i don't really see anything that has corrosion on it okay so if you were to find any corrosion on there you definitely you know you'd want to clean it off um, get all the corrosion off you can and then I'm going to show you a product that Yamaha recommends it's the Yama lube silicone lubricant and while you've got the housing off it's a good idea to spray down 
all your components. Um, wires and stuff, it keeps all your connections done. You want to make sure you don't get any up in here because that's a belt that runs around the top there. And if you get any oil on there, that could uh, cause you some slippage and stuff. But just give it a quick, especially all your electrical components. You don't want to go heavy with it. Just give it like a little light coat. This is recommended by Yamaha to help protect any wiring. And it's good for the screws, any moving parts. You know, these engines cost a lot of money. To replace this engine, you're probably talking 20 grand, 22,000. You know, a little bit of uh, money up front a little bit of uh, maintenance goes a long way to keeping your engine running good. I ordered this online, but you can get it at any Yamaha dealership that sells uh, Yamaha original Yamaha parts, or you can order it online. Okay, guys, let's check that dipstick for the last time. We're going to button this up. Now you can see we're right at right at about the 50 50% 50 mark between the low and the high 50% mark. So we're good to go. Um, the oil is the most important thing of this whole engine. You screw up on the oil, you screw your motor up. Just double check here. Make sure there's no oil puddling down here. Make sure that that seal has sealed well. Okay, guys, <clears throat> we're going to get ready to put the cowling back on. The oil's changed so you can see all this anti-siege stuff there. We're going to get this wire brush, <clears throat> try to get all that out of there. Get all the old out so that all you have is new. We're going to do that to all of the screws. Now, what this anti-siege stuff does is this is for salt water intrusion if you didn't put something on these screws would corrode this to the point where you might not be able to get these screws out in order to do your maintenance so it's important i'm going to put the panel back on these two posts there you got to make sure that they're in the in the holes they're supposed to go in and this is the anti-siege and you're just going to put it on, coat it on. You just want a light coat. And that's going to go. Put that in the bottom. You want to make sure when you tighten these, you don't tighten them, over tighten them. It's just plastic, remember. And it goes right in here. Okay, let me just tighten this screw down. And there we go. We're done. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Last thing. Don't forget to put your oil cap on. And you are good to go. Always use authentic Yamaha parts oil lube. That way there's no question about anything failing if you bought it from them. And that's it. I hope this uh, was helpful to you. If you guys are going to change your oil yourself, um, this service, I just got a price from a dealership to do just what you just saw here. Um, is about, well, this includes the lower gear oil too. So oil change, lower gear, gear oil, and grease all the fittings. It's around 350 bucks. So you save yourself a couple hundred bucks if you do it yourself. Keep all your records in case there's ever an issue with your motor. You can prove that you've changed the oil on time and, and all that stuff. All right, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up if this was helpful and you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And until we see you on the water next time, tight lines, everybody.